Hello, and welcome to The Corporate Casket, a semi-weekly series where bad businesses go to die. We will discuss any and everything from bad charities, terrible CEOs, and businesses that have a lot to hide. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're going to be talking about terrible charities. Like the Kids Wish Network, they've been called one of the worst charities out there and actually ranked number five on Smart Assets' worst charity list. Now, today's particular charity is called FFCF, or Firefighters Charitable Foundation. Although I wasn't able to find a Wikipedia on them, I'm going to go into some depth about the shady aspect of many first responder charities and how they're simply mooching off the good names of other more reputable ones. So with that being said, let's dive right in. Now let's start with who they are. According to one source, their primary focus is to provide much needed financial assistance for medical care, sustenance, housing, medical supplies, equipment, and educational scholarships to individuals, families, and children who have been affected by a fire or disaster. The foundation also provides financial assistance to families or former fire service personnel in need and provides direct aid and or funds for fire safety and burn prevention education and awareness to support other disaster or prevention related charities, institutions, and volunteer fire departments. The foundation also has a nationwide volunteer brigade that acts as their eyes and ears to identify those in critical need. The organization provided direct aid to approximately 79 qualified fire victims and their families to assist with medical care, housing, rehabilitation, food, and clothing. The organization granted funds to approximately 970 institutions. These institutions are comprised of volunteer fire departments, burn centers, other fire prevention related organizations, and other charities. Now, this initially sounds great until you take a second glance at those numbers again. They've helped 79 fire victims, just 79. Doesn't that number seem a little low? I mean, I could understand if the organization was brand new, but according to the FFCF website, they've been around since 1991. It's older than me. If this is a really small charity run by just one or two people, that may make sense, sort of. So I started digging around for answers and began with the FFCF website. To begin, there is very little information actually on there. If any kind of company should be really transparent, I feel it's charities. After all, with a charity, you're not purchasing a product, but you're giving up your money with the trust that it will go towards helping the less fortunate, sick, or animals, or whatever the charity is. Like, for example, if I just Google firefighter charity, this is one of the first to show up, the FFC, Firefighters Charity, no extra F at the end. They have stories right here on their front page, testimonials, along with articles about what they're actively doing in the community. There's a variety of events, a way to contact them for support, like you name it, they have it. Whereas the FFCF, I don't know how else to say it, but it just, it looks really questionable. Like under their donate page, it even says, please do not call a fundraising specialist will contact you, which seems a little sketch to me as well. Maybe I'm reaching here, but it does kind of rub me the wrong way. I've never seen that before on a charity's website and I've looked into quite a few charities by now. It looks like they did have a gala event coming up on November 19th of 2020, but otherwise there's nothing really public at the time of recording this or ways for the community to get involved. I can't even explain what about it is really shady. Maybe it's my own bias, the fact that I'm paranoid or the fact that they just have a dedicated long page just for those who want to stop being contacted by them. Regardless, even though the website feels like a red flag and the testimonials feel lacking, there are some pretty minor criticisms, all things considered. So let's get into some of the major stuff. What exactly is wrong with this charity? Well, the biggest issue, as you might have anticipated, is how they use their money. And that's usually the source of most of these issues. They've made around $7 million every single year for about a decade, and yet their promotional fundraising fees cost the vast, vast majority of that. And I'm talking like a good 86 to 88% of whatever they receive is fundraising. It doesn't actually go towards the charitable cause in question. The Inquirer states, Firefighters Charitable Foundation formed in 1991 to offer financial support to people who have suffered a fire or other disaster. But according to the America's Worst Charities report, much of the donations went to solicitors. Solicitors received 90 cents of every dollar raised, leaving 10 cents on every dollar going towards direct financial support. 
Looking at FCF's 2013 990 form, for-profit solicitors generated more than 7.1 million in donations for the organization and were paid 86% of that, over 6.1 million. The thing is with the Wounded Warriors Project Charity, I can at least say that it started off with good intentions and then lost its way. But with the FFCF and Kids Wish Network and these other kinds of horrible charities is that by the look of things, they never had good intentions to start. The entire purpose was just to be a cash grab. Then another source, Hallen and Law states, FCF represents that it helps children in need, assists fire and disaster victims and delivers aid directly to victims. FCF, however, was ranked the fourth worst charity in the nation. Of the 64 million donated to the charity between 2002 and 2011, FCF supposedly paid for-profit solicitors $55 million, while less than eight cents of every dollar were used to directly assist the intended beneficiaries. In addition, less than 10% of donation dollars were used for charity programs, according to the America's Worst Charities report. Already, there seems not much redeemable about them. FCF or FFCF, I've seen them called both, has no business handling anyone's money ever is really what this looks like. However, according to Helen in Law, they're not the only ones. And this is where DPSF comes in. They state, Courts have ordered several charities and for-profit solicitors to stop their illegal practices and pay millions of dollars to consumers who have been defrauded. However, there are charities that allegedly mishandled donation funds that have not yet been sued, including, according to the report, Women to Women Breast Cancer Foundation, Disabled Police and Sheriff's Foundation, and Firefighters Charitable Foundation. Law enforcement officers who became disabled in the course of their duties received a mere 1% of the 10.3 million given to DPSF on their behalf between 2003 and 2012, alleged the report. DPSF supposedly paid for-profit solicitors more than $8.8 million and spent more than $620,000 in salaries, while less than 930,000 were used for charity programs. Now, this charity also caught my attention because it's similar to the FFCF, preying upon people that want to help out emergency service workers like firefighters and police. But there's something especially scummy about a charity that's supposed to help disabled officers or disabled individuals and manages to donate as little as 1% of their earnings. The charity navigator even placed the DPSF on their high concern advisory because of the FTC's reports. And that's right, this charity was so ass backwards as to how they ran things that the FTC themselves had to get involved. Their page reads, DPSF also doing business as the American Police and Sheriff Association and Police Officers Safety Association and its founder and executive director, David Kennick are banned from soliciting charitable contributions under a settlement with the FTC and the state of Missouri for falsely claiming that consumers donations would be used to help police officers and families of slain officers provide life-saving equipment to law enforcement agencies and provide advanced specialized training for law enforcement officers and departments. DPSF solicitations appealed to consumers' desire to support the law enforcement officials who protected us all. For example, one solicitation explained that, We also provide relief to families of officers killed in the line of duty. Everyday officers bravely go out to protect our streets knowing an officer is killed in the line of duty every other day in our country. They are truly real life heroes. Consumers responded to the calls for help and donated more than $9.9 million to the ostensible charity. In reality, DPSF spent almost nothing helping the families of officers slain in the line of duty or assisting disabled police and sheriffs. And it appears to be the same story here with the DPSF. They weren't around for that long, it seems. Yet between 2013 and 2017, they collected almost $10 million for their supposed charity. And it's a genuine shame because if I had to guess what happened here based upon the FTC's reporting and more sources that we'll get into in a bit, it seemed like this charity like the FFCF had no good intentions to begin with. These places think of a name that sounds legit, help a few people for testimonies and the rest goes towards living the high life and paying their executives a stupid exorbitant salary. That's not a charity, that's a business where the consumer gets nothing but the delusion that their money has gone to a good cause. And it sucks because people want to help. The $10 million they collected proves that. But these so-called charities prey upon that good nature, that desire to aid a community, disabled officers, firefighters, and use those dollars on themselves. And because of telemarketers, it's all too easy to do so. 
They just have to pressure someone over the phone enough times or sound professional enough for those donations. The FTC continued in their statement and explained why DPSF was horrible enough to warrant being shut down. The defendants are charged with violating the FTC Act, the FTC's telemarketing sales rule and Missouri state law, Cheating citizens out of money and personally profiting under the guise of helping disabled law enforcement is despicable, said Eric Schmidt, Missouri Attorney General. Make no mistake, if you seek to scam or defraud Missouri's most vulnerable, we will bring you to justice. I'm grateful to have worked with the FTC and their talented team to bring David Kennick to justice, and I will continue to fight to ensure Missourians are protected from scams and frauds. The commission vote approving the proposed stipulated final order with the Disabled Police and Sheriff's Foundation, Inc. was 5-0. It was filed in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Missouri on March 27, 2019. The order also imposes a monetary judgment of $9.9 million. All but 100,000 of this amount is suspended due to defendants' inability to pay. The money paid will go to one or more legitimate charities that actually assist disabled police and sheriffs as recommended by the state of Missouri and approved by the court. And seriously, these sorts of charities absolutely deserve to be dissolved and pay all that money back. But it worries me to think that some may not get caught for ages. I mean, FFCF has been around since 1991 and they seem to fall into the same vein that DPSF did. So why haven't they been caught yet? More people have been outspoken against the FFCF in recent years as well, so we can only hope it's just a matter of time before they too are dissolved. One article from late 2014 on Stater911 reads, the worst firefighter charity in the nation is Long Island's Firefighters Charitable Foundation. Here, the author looks at their abysmal 28 out of 100 score on charity rating, the top 10 lists they've been a part of, and the articles we've looked at so far. Then they say, but just in case you still aren't certain that you shouldn't give your hard-earned money to this firefighter charity, I have a third source. Would you take the word of Frank Tepedino? Not familiar with Frank? Tepedino is a former Major League Baseball player. He spent eight years in the Braves, Brewers, and Yankee organizations, playing his last game in 1975. It would not be inappropriate to ask at this point what a former first baseman and right fielder know about firefighter charities. The answer is that for the past eight years, Frank Tepedino has been the president of the Firefighters Charitable Foundation. And amazingly, it seems Tepedino agrees with all the bad things everyone else is saying about his charity. Tepedino told WPIX TV, you know, it's not a good way of people giving their money. Still don't believe it? You can hear Tepedino say the very words in the video above, in reference to the article, by the way. Tepedino's blunt comments would seem to indicate that he is going to change the way FFCF does business. But Frank has been frank about his charity before and nothing good happened. Way back in 2007, he told the Milwaukee Sentinel that FFCF was going to change the way it raised money. It didn't. The large majority of the money goes to telemarketers and solicitors who actually raise the money. The article lists other firefighter charities too, like Association for Firefighters and Paramedics, Firefighters Assistance Fund, and Firefighters Burn Fund. These three and the FFCF all managed to make the America's Worst Charity list. And in case you haven't noticed a pattern, it seems like these organizations, because I'm not really certain if I feel confident calling them charities at this point, have done an excellent job at throwing together charities that are bound to tug on generous people's heartstrings. I mean, helping out a firefighter, someone who risks their lives to save everyday people like you and me is a worthwhile cause. And the way these people prey upon this is so disgusting. I just don't even have the words for it. For fuck's sake, Tepedino himself knows it. He knows what he's doing and he knows it's wrong. And he plays this pretend game of, oh, we're going to get better when reality, they don't give a damn about helping anyone. One source broke down FFCF spending down further and said, for the calendar year ending December 31st, 2015, FFCF reported collecting $6.3 million from fundraising efforts but 5.6 million immediately went out the door to paid telemarketers and for other fundraising costs. That produced a fundraising efficiency, the percent of donations left after subtracting the cost of generating them, or just 11%. So only about $700,000 remained. From that, the total amount spent in grants and other assistance to individuals and organizations, the real good work stuff was just $218,791. 
That amounted to only 3.5% of the donations received. The rest spent was largely for management and overhead, even including some of that expense as good works by the charity's own accounting, its charitable commitment ratio, the cut of expense in furtherance of the mission as a percent of all expenses was a mere 7%. According to filings, that $218,791 was divided up among 79 individuals and 595 organizations for a total of 674 recipients. That means that the average grant was a relatively modest $324.62. With the word firefighters in the name, a would-be donor might think the charity is run by firefighters, but the roster of FFCS's board of directors on its website lists no one as a current firefighter. FFCF's longtime president is Frank Tepedino, a former Major League Baseball player and retired New York City Fire Department employee. He and his wife, who is the secretary treasurer, were paid a combined $101,000, nearly half of the $218,791 given out in grants and assistance. Earlier this week, I sent a note to the FFCF through its website making many of the points above and asking for comment. I haven't heard back, but I will update this post if I do. And as of writing this, there hasn't been any updates from this post. So I guess Tapadino's it's not a good way of people giving money thing probably still stands. Truthfully, I'm still amazed that he said that. Talk about digging your own grave. It's a shame that this barely seemed to affect them though. And it's why it's always a good idea to do a little bit of extra research before giving a company money over the phone. After all, if they're legit, they'll wait and understand why you wanna be sure. At least they should anyway. It's the ones that are questionable that will push you to donate right then and there. Now, before we continue to discuss some of the reviews about this supposed charity, let's go ahead and take a quick break to thank today's sponsors. Summer is in full swing right now, and it is obviously time to be outside and enjoy the outdoors. But if you're like me, and even if that involves just looking around outdoors, like sometimes I don't really wanna hear the outdoors much. I just wanna hear whatever I'm vibing. I'm on a serious emo kick right now, and I'm resurrecting all my old songs from middle school and high school. And Raycons make it super easy to just have something discreet in my ear as I'm going about my day, walking Casper outside, doing whatever so that I can listen to the music that I want to, enjoy the little mini soundtrack to my life, all while having premium sound buzzing through my ears. So no matter if you're relaxing at home, listening to audiobooks, or on the go at the gym, listening to music, a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ears can make all the difference. And you'll get crisp, powerful beats at half the price of other premium audio brands. And Raycons are built to go wherever you go with quick and seamless Bluetooth pairing and a compact charging case. So listen up, Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for my listeners. And here's what you gotta do to get it. Simply go to buyraycon.com slash casket. And there you'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. And it's such a good deal, you'll wanna grab a pair and a spare. Again, that's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash casket. Buyraycon.com slash casket. This episode is also sponsored by Stitch Fix. Shopping for new clothes can be needlessly stressful, so why not let Stitch Fix make it easy by doing the work for you so you can spend time doing the things that you love instead? Now, many of you know my sweater addiction. I don't care how hot or cold it is outside. I will literally always wear sweaters. And in fact, recently I started posting on my Instagram again. And a few of you asked if that was in fact one of the Stitch Fix sweaters that I was wearing. And it was, I I don't care that it's July. It's sweater season, all season. But Stitch Fix definitely helps me out. Choose out sweaters that even I wouldn't really consider. And yet once they arrive and I try them on, I'm like, Damn, y'all really did know what you were doing with this one. And Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. And every piece is chosen to fit your life and style and what you like and don't like. And it's the easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. And it's super easy and there's no subscription required. You just try Stitch Fix once or you can set up automatic deliveries. You just pay $20 for each box as a styling fee and that gets credited toward any piece that you keep. And there's no hidden fees ever. You just keep what you like, return what you don't. And Stitch Fix has styles and clothing to fit any occasion for women, men, and even kids. And they ship all over the US and they're available in the UK as well. So if you wanna get started today, make sure you go to stitchfix.com slash casket and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash casket for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. stitchfix.com slash casket. (laughs) 
As for what people have to say about this charity, that's one of the things I was most excited for because I knew plenty would tear this charity to shreds and I was absolutely right. The only review higher than one star on a nonprofit website said how 10 to 12% of the gross income turns out to be a lot, which yeah, I mean, 10% of millions of dollars may be a lot of money, but it's still not a fair percentage to be donating in the first place especially not when people expect more than 10 cents on the dollar to go towards the cause these places claim to be supporting. Otherwise, all of the reviews stated that the FFCF was being investigated, that their money goes to the solicitors and higher ups, you get the picture. One even said, "'Firefighters Charitable Foundation, so they call themselves, sent me a bill saying that I had pledged $25 and that it was now due. I had not pledged anything. They are now sending me the same bill every week.'" To top that off, Bills always insist that I add an additional $2 to my so-called pledge. I am very glad that I researched them online at Great Nonprofits and Charity Navigator and learned that they spend almost all their money on fundraising and administration. It is sad that probably many people fall for their scams. It is also sad that they are giving a bad name to firefighters. I used to be one and 99% of them are really good, honest people. I also used to be the executive director of a fire-related charitable nonprofit, and we spent about 95% of our income, grants, and donations directly helping people. This outfit should be indicted by federal law enforcement. And I really agree with this. I hope the FFCF is caught soon and shut down. The problem is that, you know, because they sound a lot like other firefighter charities we mentioned, they could be using the other charities' good names and better reputations against them even though the good charity in this case is based in the UK, not the US. For someone older who Googles firefighter charity, not knowing which it is, they might believe that, yeah, this is the one with the five stars on Facebook or something. It reminds me a lot of the Kids Wish Network playing off of Make-A-Wish's good name anyway, so I wouldn't be surprised if they do this because we've already seen it happen before. And as for DPSF, when they were around, they did the exact same thing as far as the scammy phone calls go. One source, the Salisbury Post says, a reader asked which, if any, telephone solicitations for donations to police, highway patrol, sheriffs, and other first responders causes are valid. The short answer is, it depends. There's no one size fits all rule out there. Patty Hsu, a staff attorney at the Federal Trade Commission. There are going to be legitimate charities that are fundraising and illegitimate charities that are fundraising. There have been issues of fraud with charities that claim to help groups like veterans, policemen, and firefighters. For example, the Disabled Police and Sheriff's Foundation Incorporated, DPSF, also did business under other names, was shut down in 2019, according to a 2019 FTC press release. The group raised over $9.9 million in phone solicitations, although it spent a slim minority of that helping officers. However, the actual number of charity scams can be difficult to estimate, Hisu said. Many times people do not know that they have been scammed. And that much is absolutely true. If someone didn't follow up on what the DPSF was at the time or the FFCF, then chances are someone could donate a few dollars to the charity thinking it's legitimate and walk away without ever learning who or what they were supporting. Also, as a random side note here, if you do ever decide to look up DPSF, chances are you're gonna come across the Durham Public School Foundation. And that was founded in 2018 after the Disabled Police and Sheriff's Foundation was dissolved. So if you're looking up charities and hear those acronyms, don't think that I'm looking up that one. I just wanted to make that clear now because that was something I realized might be a little confusing. But as for many first responder charities, please, please make sure you're doing proper research before donating. Many first responder units are supported by charities that raise funds to injure those in the line of duty, as well as helping family members of a first responder that dies in the line of duty. But there's so many scams now using emotional appeal as the Clarion Ledger said in 2018. Scammers often use an emotional appeal to encourage donations and may use the name of a real organization to solicit funds. In some cases, they'll use names that are very similar to more well-known organizations to trick you into thinking you're supporting the better known organization. If you get a call like this, remember that just because someone says they're calling on behalf of a particular organization doesn't mean it's true. And Cheney added, do not give out any personal information via phone or email to anyone who calls you about a donation like this. Although a particular fundraising organization may be legitimately soliciting funds for a local department, they often take a major part of donated funds to pay for the fundraising. So ask how much of your donated dollar will go directly to help first responders. 
And even if the solicitation sounds legitimate, you don't have to make the decision over the phone. Ask them for you to send something in the mail and follow up with a call to your local police or fire department to verify the caller's information and ask whether that's the best way to help. I agree wholeheartedly with this. And if you do get these scam calls or suspicious fundraising calls, then it's worth reporting them too, for the sake of people who may not know any better. But with that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's episode of The Corporate Casket. Hopefully the FFCF will end up on the side of scummy charities that get shut down, just as the DPSF did. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. And if you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and all of that good stuff so that you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. And if you wanna connect with me outside of these episodes, make sure that you follow my Linktree link, click that and you're gonna see everything nice and organized for all projects I'm involved in, Twitch, Discord server, my social media, Twitter, Instagram, you name it, it's all gonna be there. So thank you all so much for making it to another episode. Love you all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.